Welcome to the Bonus Time Monster Truck Podcast, presented by Monster Talk, your number one source for the latest news, results, and more from the monster truck world. Meet the host for tonight's episode, Ewan Ford and Jackson Morris. So strap yourselves in, because bonus time starts now. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Bonus Time Monster Truck Podcast, presented by Monster Talk. I'm your host, Jackson Morris, owner of Monster Talk. Tonight, we only have Ewan Ford. Uh, Wayne is still in Indiana as of the recording of this video, and Reagan Szymanski is somewhere. Uh, he is missing. He is missing. Guys, put up missing posters. <laughs> Uh, but a- anyway, uh, I'm sure they will be back on for another exciting episode of bonus time. Uh, you know, we're going to try and pump these out. We're going to try and keep up with all the exciting news and action that is happening in the monster truck world. So they may not be on every single one, but we'll try and get them on for as many as we can. So you and let's not waste any more time and get straight into the results that we have from monster jam, as well as two independent shows. We'll start off in Monster Jam in Rosemont, Illinois. Show 1 saw Bari Musawa in Gravedigger win racing, Sky Wheelies, Freestyle, and the overall event championship. And Tony Oaks and Thunder Rose would win skills. Now, again, if you saw the news video that we put up just after the release of the first episode of the podcast, you would know about Bari Musawa driving Gravedigger. I'm sure we'll talk about that later. Show 2 was Bari Musawa winning racing, Sky Wheelies, and the overall, and Tony Oaks would win skills once again, as well as freestyle. Show three, Bari Musawa would win racing, Sky Wheelies, freestyle, and the overall, and Brandon Talachka in Just Get It Done 2 would win skills. Show four, Brandon Talachka would win racing, Bari Musawa would win Sky Wheelies, Tony Oaks would win skills, freestyle, and the overall. And for the final show in Rosemont, Barry Musel would win racing, Sky Willies, and the overall, while Tony Oaks would win two-wheel skills and freestyle. Now, we'll come back to our thoughts about all of these events after we go through uh, sorry, after we go through all of the results. So now let's move on to Monster Jam in Hildago, Texas. Show 1 saw Caleb Blood in Soldier Fortune win racing, Sky Wheelies, and the overall event championship. Zach Garner in Wild Time won skills and freestyle. Show 2, Amona Castro in El Toro Loco won racing, skills, freestyle, and the overall. And Matt Cody in Gravedigger won Sky Wheelies. Show 3, Matt Cody won racing, Sky Wheelies of the overall, and Amana Castro won skills of freestyle. Show 4, Amana Castro won racing and Sky Wheelies, Dalton Widener won two-wheel skills, and Zach Garner won freestyle in the overall. Our final event in Hildago, Texas, Show 5, Amana Castro won racing, Colt Stevens won Sky Wheelies, Dalton Widener won two-wheel skills, Matt Cody won freestyle, with the highest score of the year, by the way, a 9.940. I believe the original highest score was, I think, Adam Anderson with a 9.912. I'll yes. put that up on... Okay, I was just about to say, I'll put that up on screen uh, if I got that wrong. And Caleb Blood won the overall at show five. Our other two results, we have Monster Trap Wars in Swedesboro, New Jersey, racing was won by Jimmy Cream and Bounty Hunter, while Wheelies, Donuts, and Freestyle was won by Rob Putre in Shark Bite. And our final set of results, Full Throw Monster Trucks in Walton, Kentucky, Wheelies and Freestyle was won by Bigfoot with Roger Gouger, and racing was won by Monkey Business with Thomas Borders. Now, there were some fairly solid highlights from these events, Ewan. Uh, just off the top of my head, you know, the all new sky really competition that we'll talk about, uh, in just a second, we'll talk about how that is going to play an integral part in monster jam next year, monster jam arenas. Uh, but just off the top of my head, uh, Paul Manuel Solorio in Rosemont, uh, had this moment 
Oh, again, for those that are watching the video podcast on YouTube, which you should definitely check out, by the way, uh, he went up the pod. He, I think, had like a terrible rebound on the end of the pod. Truck program forward, tried to save it, and then rolled forward and landed in the stands. Uh, wow. I mean, there's a lot of venue damage there, hopefully – uh, no one was injured, by the way, I should say. I'm sure people probably know that by now, but Manuel is okay. Uh, but not a great moment for him. Um, yeah. <laughs> we're going to see Dustin Brown next weekend. Maybe. I mean, it, it kind of sucks, but, you know, I guess that is kind of the game that you play. You kind of run that risk of doing that, and, you know, it's not entirely his fault. Um, yeah. you know, a, an unlucky rebound like that, you know, you don't want to damage the truck, but you also want to try and put on a show. You also want to try and be as safe as you can. And, you know, sometimes stuff happens. Uh, speaking of weird moments, uh, probably my favorite moment from Hildago, uh, was racing. Uh, I'll put up on screen the video and I'll also put up which show it was. Cause I'll be honest with you. I don't remember what it was. Uh, but Kayla Blood was racing against, I believe, Colt Stevens in Thunder Roarus, and the wheel came off. I have never <laughs> seen that in my life. Just a random turn, and the wheel just shreds off. It was actually kind of funny, <laughs> but I don't even know how that happens. People were saying that, you know, maybe it was just, like, dumb luck, or, like, the wheel wasn't tightened enough, or... I don't know, but that was weird. Uh, someone forgot a tighten a couple lug nuts in the wheel i mean I it guess. could have been we really don't know obviously nothing bad else happened with that it was just really weird and really funny uh and we're gonna save our thoughts for the sky wheeling competition uh in just a little bit so ewan we'll go over to you now to talk about these events in rosemont oh i should also say as well i'm sure you probably bring it up barry sound driving grave digger did absolutely fantastic this weekend. Uh, so with that in mind and everything else we've talked about, what did you think about all of the shows from Walton to uh, Swedesboro and, of course, all the Monster Jam shows in the arenas this weekend? Well, we got Rosemont with Bari, and I saw some people saying Bari should be in Gravedigger next season, just like from, from just Rosemont alone. I mean, sure, he, he did good. Yeah, I, I wish to see him in Gravedigger again if he wants to, I guess. But it, it was very interesting to see like all the truck changes we had. We had Matt Cody and Hildago as well, which was very strange because he's in 35 of all trucks, I guess. It just, they, just, they just sent him there. Cool. And it was just... And in, in Walton, I think, I think I saw that show. Oh, I, I saw Bustin' Loose roll over. That's what I saw. That one clip I saw. That was a that was a fantastic moment. A crazy <laughs> save attempt, by the way. <laughs> Honestly, the track in Walton wasn't that bad. Yeah. I mean, yeah. for what full throttle monster trucks are put on, there's always put on very, I guess you could say, very contemporary, respectable, you know, dare I say classic tracks. Like when I say classic, I mean like 1990s where like they've always got like, you know, yeah, like, like a van stack and a few sets of cars. Like they really went above and beyond yeah, for like this a, track. Like a van stack and like a like straight line drags kind of deal. Yeah. The, yeah. This time they had the, the, um, I think it was like basically like J hook. Like you start in the middle and then you yeah. race outwards and you. Yeah, and over the bus too. And yes. Oh well, cool. yeah. You basically started on the bus and then you did all of that. Uh, yeah, Bari, to, to go off what you were saying as well, uh, Bari had a fantastic weekend. Uh, obviously had a lot of competition wins uh, in, you know, the all-new Sky Wheeling competition. I think he did pretty fantastic. I think this has easily been probably his biggest name that he's been able to represent. It was honestly just by, you know, complete coincidence. I think as well that we should also point out you and that I did comment in some of my news videos because I know a lot of people were questioning that why isn't Kristen here? Why isn't Weston here? Because they were originally supposed to be in these lineups. Uh, the reason why they weren't here originally was due to Bryce Kenny's event to promote his new book. Uh, I forget what it's called. I'm terrible at remembering this. It was like Geared Up for Life or something like that. You know, I'll put up yeah, the book on screen. And I so it's kind so. of, I think that's what it was. Again, I'll put it up on screen for those that are watching. 
Uh, but it was to promote this new event and to uh, promote, I think it was pediatric cancer, which was a fantastic cause, by the way, a really lovely event. And after that, they announced, <clears throat> or I should say Bryce announced that the Andersons, who were originally supposed to be there, were actually going to be there because of a tragic event uh, in their family, which they haven't really released that much info on. And uh, out of respect to their family, I don't really want to uh, speculate about that or, you know, what it could be because they haven't released it. And obviously it's private info and I'm sure they don't want the whole world to know if it was something really bad and had to do with the Master Truck family. I'm sure they would release it <coughs> uh, by now. Um, so with that being said... I think we had a phenomenal weekend in Rosemont, phenomenal weekend in Hildago, as well as the other two shows. We also wanted to do something brand new. We wanted to pick a star driver uh, for each show. So uh, it's essentially a driver that we thought was the star of the weekend, the highlight of the weekend, based on how many wins they had, how impressive they were, how many highlights they had driving or again competition wise just who essentially our personal favorite from that weekend so here i have mine uh i've got here uh bari musawa for rosemont again very impressive filling in for grave digger since weston and Kristen could not compete uh, since they were doing the thing again, we already just talked about that. And I put down Armando Castro for Hildago. Very many wins. Very impressive. Armando's a great driver. He's been in arenas for most of the season, and he's always tore it up. And he's going to be back there next season. So at this point, he's just getting uh, ready for next year's season. So Ewan, I'll hand it over to you. Who are your star drivers from the weekend? Like you said, I also have Bari in Rosemont because, I mean, Bari got it. He 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 overalled a lot this weekend. I think he overalled four of the five shows. I think. Yeah. Uh, well, we just went over it, so if I'm getting <laughs> that wrong, my brain did a dumb. But yeah, I mean, Bari just did good, and then he got my pick. And then for Hildago, I got Zach Garner because. Uh, a shout out to Super Destroyer sixty six in the Monster Talk Discord server. You should join that. He had uh, the overall points of the entire weekend. He was first place with one hundred and twelve, and Armando Castro right behind him. So I picked Zach Garner as my pick for consistency. Absolutely, and that isn't something you know. That's something that we should definitely try and explore in future podcasts. This is that <clears throat> you know, as you were saying, he may not have. I don't think he won. Did he win a? I, I get. I think he got terrible. one overall. I believe. Oh y yes, yes, yeah, so far. Okay, so with one overall compared to the five shows, he was still the most consistent. So honestly, that's a very. Uh, I don't know what the word is. A, a, a very... Very good. Very, very good, good pick. Honestly, probably a lot better than mine. Uh, but it is a matter of opinion, and it is just for good fun. Let's move over to the news. The biggest thing from the weekend was the addition of the Sky Wheelie competition. So, if you've been paying attention to the format of how <clears throat> Monster Jam does their arenas, it used to be racing or time racing Two-wheel skills, donuts, freestyle, and then they'd crown the overall, which isn't a competition, but whatever. And then halftime would be between the two-wheel uh, two competition and uh, the overall. Uh, donuts wasn't held at every event. Uh, sometimes it was down to ventilation or the dirt being too tacky or for whatever reasons, which uh, we will answer a bit more of those in the fan questions. Um... But the Sky Wheelie really competition is something really unique that no one really expected. So I should probably also say as well, the Sky Wheelie really competition, it works like this. So they get one attempt at doing their best Sky Wheelie. The Sky Wheelie really competition in of itself is straight after racing. So two of the skills is after the intermission. So in order of competitions, it'd be racing or time racing. And then the Sky Wheelie really competition, halftime intermission, and then it'd be two-wheel skills and freestyle. And I believe in two-wheel skills now, you are not allowed to do Skywheel, kind of because, you know, that's what the Skywheel yeah. competition is for. 
Uh, so very, very interesting that they changed this. I don't think anyone saw this coming, Ewan. And honestly, yeah. from some of the highlights that we've watched, it's pretty damn entertaining. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm super stoked about this. Uh, I wanted to ask you, what are your thoughts? And what do you think the future of uh, this new competition means, uh, not just for the rest of the season, because there's obviously a lot more arena uh, stops for the rest of the year, uh, but for next year? I mean, it's just going to be very interesting because obviously most some of the independents only do like these only do sky wheelies in skills and it was very interesting to see like raminator ramunition try to do poppers and i mean raminator got one he also didn't and flipped over a couple times but it was very interesting to see all the ram trucks try these new moves and i think we're gonna see like these independents just really try these new moves out like next week we might see like Stone Crusher do a moonwalk, and you know, who, who, who knows? Absolutely. I think to me, uh, going off of your point, I think for me, this encourages more creativity in the skills challenge. I know a lot of people get really sick and tired of the two wheel skills competition. And to be honest, to an extent, I think most people do. But I think that, as you said, at least for some of the uh, trucks that aren't like the fell trucks, with all due respect to them. Uh, in terms of their two wheel game, you know, most of the time you you kind of go in thinking, you know, oh, Reminator's just gonna do a sky wheelie, or Reminition is just gonna do uh, a, um, I guess a sky wheelie as well. So now they really have to innovate and try something new. So now I think it kind of evens out the playing field, uh, because obviously to start off with, you know, they might not be able to get it. Uh, because I'm sure that they're not practicing this, you know, every single week. Um, so for them, this is their chance to get to that point where they're trying new stuff out and trying to win those competitions. And the Sky Wheelie competition is pretty much, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, it's all about the positioning and the ramp you hit and the throttle that you use. It has skill involved in it, but... It's, it's kind of something that everyone can do. And to be honest, it's a lot more entertaining than Donuts. And especially when Donuts wasn't even at every single arena show due to the reasons that we've both talked about and will talk about. Um, it's, you know, to me, it's a no-brainer that they, that they should have done this. I'm surprised that they didn't do it sooner. Uh, I like it. Uh, Ewan, I know we just, I know you basically just sell us, but... Do you like it? Do you think you should change it or they should change it? What are your thoughts? Uh, I think it's a, it's, it's a step up from donuts at least, you know? And I have to say, I have the stats for right now, and I have to say uh, Bari swept Sky Wheelies and Rosemont because Bari is just good at wheelies, I guess. But yeah, it's, it's a step up from donuts. That, that's all really I can say because... I guess I guess now, but now two wheel skills is only one move, so I don't know if they're gonna change that for later. But yeah. Oh, is it? I didn't even. Yeah. Is it? Is it actually one move? I think two wheel skills is now only one move now, which is strange. That is weird. Yeah. So I guess. That okay. Well, um, interesting. Okay, that kind of that kind of changes the dynamic of it though, because I guess then the drivers really have to put their focus and their energy into it. Well, for the two wheel competition, I mean, at least one move. Very interesting. Um, kind of surprised about that. I'm not really sure if I like that. I still think that two, two wheel moves is the best way to go. I mean, yes, obviously some people will, will say that, you know, not every driver can get it. So doing one, at least, you know, if they fail it, whatever. But I think that two, two wheel moves is the way to go, but I guess we'll see. Uh, we do have some other news. This is a really exciting one that uh, someone from the community that I'm involved in, the Sim Monsters community, John Doe pointed out, or uh, I think one of his friends, uh, then John told me. So, John, appreciate uh, this. So, I've had a theory. Or, well, they had a theory. And a it's a very. Theory? A game theory. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a pretty good theory. So. Let's talk about this. On MJ's website, down the bottom, 
uh, of the website, you'll see all of their sponsors. And I, I know that most of you are probably like, Jackson, what the hell are you cooking? Well, let me cook, because this this is a pretty... If this becomes true, this might top my my Cody Saucier Dragon Todd the Duke Blue Thunder 2022 prediction, because that was pretty insane. So anyway, let's uh, bring this seriousness back in. So at the bottom, there's all of their sponsors, Great Clips, Spin Master. Uh, I don't need to keep going. You know the big sponsors are down there. Obviously, some of the smaller ones as well. Now down there is Ford. It was not previously there. I believe it might have been for some of the older uh, pages that are sponsored by Ford. Oh, sorry, some of the older events, local events that are sponsored by Ford. I believe that there's somewhere like Evansville or something that has a local Ford sponsorship with one of the dealerships. So they themselves sponsor the event. So if there's something like that, you would see it on there. But in general, when you scroll down, Ford was not on there. So... Going off of this into where the theory really comes together, Stadium Championship Series West is visiting Detroit. What is Detroit's venue name? Ford Field. Now, this is where it gets even better. This is where my theory or whoever's theory you want to talk about really starts to come together. There is one more spot open on Stadium Championship Series West. Tristan England has not been announced yet. Put two and two together, we could see a Ford sponsorship. Now, I do want to state so that people don't spread this like wildfire and all of that. As of currently, this is a working theory. It is subject to change, and it is not even based on any... Yeah, other than the facts that I've said, this is purely speculation. This is not facts yet. But if it is true, that is pretty exciting. Obviously, there are other drivers that could take over this Ford thing. But for me, I think Tristan England is a good spot. It especially depends on what Ford truck this could be. I think most people would foam at the mouth for a Ford-sponsored Blue Thunder especially since Blue Thunder now has was just relegated to the international tour, and now it's not even on there at all because of the all-new Marvel trucks. Can you imagine if it came back for Stadia Championship Series West with Tristan England or someone else behind the wheel and sponsored by Ford? I think that would be huge. But, again, it could be a new identity altogether. Obviously, when Lucas Oil came back, they wanted to come up with Stabilizer rather than the Lucas Oil Crusader, which is fair because Stabilizer, epic truck. Uh, so, it could be something all new together. Again, just a theory. Ewan, we talked a little bit about this. I'm sure you have some interesting thoughts about this. So, we'll go over to you. What are your thoughts about a potential, want to stress that enough, potential Ford sponsorship and everything that we've talked about. Well, I'm going to hop on the speculation train. And I mean, Ford coming back, I think everybody wants it, or I guess Ford might be coming back to a truck or just sponsors it, but Ford coming back, I think everybody wants it to be blue thunder. You know, if it like, if it comes back with the new truck mold, I mean, Ford is going is diving definitely deeper into electric vehicles, Blue Thunder, electric vehicles, Ford, you know, that could be a thing that happens. Definitely. And I was thinking about this as well. They could pick one of their star uh, vehicles from their fleet to, I guess, advertise it and put it uh, as, as you said, a new body mold, uh, something just up the, off the top of my head, you know, obviously like a, like a truck, as in like a, a F-150 sort of type yeah, the, the, uh, the new truck. For it, yeah. <clears throat> exactly. So, and they could like tie it in, you know, we could have Blue Thunder on, uh, Blue Thunder, that didn't make sense. Blue Thunder on a, a completely different mold in of itself. Again, I do want to stress, I know people are probably sick of it. I know you is probably sick of it. It is just speculation at the moment. Uh, this is just our thoughts, but I did think it was very interesting to point out and, you know, Monster Jam is very 
sneaky with all the stuff that they put up there. And I, you know, it may explain why Tristan, who despite was at the uh the filming of the schedule announcement, didn't get announced despite being there. Don't ask me how, why he would be an Earthshaker then, but th then again, it is subject to change. You know, we could wake up tomorrow and and Tom Anderson, Adam Anderson are back on the same tour. Please no, but I'm just saying that it is always subject to change and things may yeah. change and things may happen. So let's move on to our final news story of tonight, and then we'll answer the fan questions that you guys left, which I'm super excited to talk about. So this was just revealed earlier today. Uh, the event blurb on the Superstar Challenge page reveals something very interesting. We'll see if you can, uh, if you guys at home can notice this. Uh, the the blurb reads as the following: Get ready, Southern California Monster Jam Superstar Challenge is coming to Angel Stadium of Anaheim for the first time ever on November 11th. See fan favorite trucks and drivers in this fun, friendly Monster Jam team competition where superstars face off in racing, freestyle, and best trick competitions with bragging rights on the line. Plus, we will be attempting our most epic stunt yet. The fun starts at the expanded pit party. Don't miss the high-octane fun. We can't wait to see you in Anaheim. So, uh, the most epic stunt yet. That's pretty interesting. And I I just thought about this now. Uh, was the was the Thunder Roarus uh on call that was supposed to be a world finals didn't they say that was our most epic stunt yet i don't know if i'm missing or misreading stuff i swear they I, put it in there i don't know i think they might say that for every stunt as like a little i mean you are captain, true you know but yeah I, I, trust, I don't think it was in all honesty but i mean it might it have been i'll put up, it up I'll, I'll put it up on screen for those yeah, that are, but, the, those that are watching the video I mean, version ep epic stunt you know what else? Who else could they do? I mean, to be, to be honest, I think they could try and do some some sort of I mean, flip, a, a innovation of a flip. I mean, we really don't know what what goes on at the Monster Jam thing, and now that Tom Menz is basically preparing his exit from the sport, he could really be trying to uh, come up with something really interesting. So I don't know, maybe some sort of flip, or it could just be. You know, their most epic stunt yet, and they jump over 10 trucks this time, and that's, like, awesome. Oh, I think they did that last time. They, well, they did nine. They did, did nine. They, did, yeah, they did, did nine they did, at World Finals. So okay, we're jumping so 10. <laughs> we're jumping 10. Oh, my the goodness. The record is broken, guys. The record is broken for the fifth time. <laughs> to be honest, I, I, I'm going to put my wild prediction out there. All right. It's going to be a barrel roll like I Ooh. do every day in Rigs of Rods. <laughs> and I crash horribly. But they're gonna land it. Honestly, I, I, I know that. Honestly, that would be really cool. I think that you know, if this isn't, uh, you know, ten truck jump hype, uh, I think that could be what we get to see. Who knows? Um, I'm really excited to see what this is. Yeah, it's it's a truck jump, except Tom lands on the trucks. Oh, no way. It's it's the most epic stunt. Oh, oh man. It's a Max it's a Max D train forward True momentum backflip. Maximum destruction. Maximum destruction. <laughs> the first uncle where Feld retires five chassis because <laughs> Tom Menz drove up all of them. World Finals 2 style. <laughs> he just comes up and just wrecks his truck. Just, he doesn't, he doesn't even ramp. He just goes into it. He just goes off, into it. Off full the throw. tires. <laughs> Drive shaft goes flying. I'm sure that won't cause any issues down Sorry, the road. Me. Oh. All right. Well, we are almost at the end of the podcast. We have fan questions and I'm really excited to bring you this because back when I used to do my first podcast, which wasn't nearly as good as bonus time is, I did want to do fan questions. And now that we've got this expanded following, I'm really excited to answer your fan questions. So, uh, we're going to read out these questions and we're going to give our thoughts. So make sure to submit your fan questions every single week. I'll do a community post and post all over my social media before 
an episode is filmed, such as, to, uh, well, you guys would have seen it by now, but I posted this yesterday as of recording and we're answering it now. So, from Nitro Studios, who do you think will be added to the lineup for the Superstar Challenge? A very interesting question. Uh, I'll start off with mine. I think that we are going to get uh, some really interesting combos of, I think for me at least, uh, really interesting uh, people. Because remember, at the World Finals, we really weren't expecting uh, the two people that, you know, because remember when we watched the original uh, All-Star Draft, they picked based on, you know, obviously they picked uh, from the field of people that they had, uh, whereas now it looks like you can pick from all 48, however many drivers they have. Um, but they are picking, so I think, to bring it back in, I'm messing up my words here, I think that they are going to pick uh, drivers... I don't think I don't know if they're gonna do the same thing where they pick based on you know who would be the most uh, biggest asset to the team. Like I don't think Ryan is gonna be picked next, you know, or something like that. I'm think that that he'll be further down. Uh, but obviously, someone like Ryan is gonna get picked. So in terms of people, I think we could see some new stars in here. Um, if I had to nail it down to one. I almost said Kristen, and then I realized that she's the team captain. Um, God, I don't know. Maybe, maybe El. Uh, no, because Amanda's already there. I don't know. I really don't know. I might, I might go off of what you have to say, you and who yeah. do you think is going to be picked for the Superstar Challenge? Uh, to be honest, uh, for the Superstar Challenge, obviously, I think all the Grave Digger drivers are going to be there. Maybe, I don't True. know. Pro probably, but. I just hope to see like some. Obviously, we're gonna see different designs for all the different trucks, so we're gonna see a lot of fell trucks, different designs. Hopefully, we see some uh, independent trucks there with different designs as well. I think uh, for I think my main like pick, I think we're gonna see, I think we're gonna see Cole probably Ooh. there. Yeah, and I think I, I think we're also gonna see Zach Garner there as well. Goodness, those are my two that I have for independent picks. That Zach might would be. Yeah. Pretty fantastic being in that lineup. Uh, I think as well, going off of what you said, I just realized as well, they have, not including the international drivers, they have uh, five U.S. touring Gravedigger drivers. One of them is the team captain. We could see two, uh, you know, Gravedigger versus, you know, Gravedigger and Gravedigger versus the two others. So, you know, Adam or Weston. Like Adam or Weston on the same team, and then Brandon and uh, sorry, Bra I almost said Weston again. Brandon and Tyler could be really or, interesting. Or we could have the two, we could have two stadium gravedigger drivers. You know, Adam and um, Tyler versus Brandon and Weston. I think that could be really cool. Um, just all of the team gravedigger drivers. All the team gravedigger. Yeah, team. all all the team gravedigger drivers. Because Kristen picked gravedigger. It's just, it's just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For Team Neon, it's Gravedigger four times. <laughs> that could be that could be really interesting. Um, yeah. I uh, hopefully Nitro Studios. I gave you a good answer, uh, but at the very least, you got a good answer from Ewan. We'll move over to our next fan question from uh, at Crusher Callahan three three zero four. How do you think donuts will? Uh, sorry, I cannot read. How do you think Donuts being gone will affect the Arena Championships? Personally, I think Kristen always does good in Baltimore with her okay, with okay, her wild Donuts. Did you add that? Grammar. Grammar, English. Okay. I guess it's um, grammar, right? Anyway, uh, but I'm looking forward to seeing what she could bring to the newly renovated large floor and raised scoreboard in Sky Wheelies. So this is kind of what we were talking about earlier. I think that um, that this will be a very interesting... Um, it will pose an interesting challenge because as we were saying earlier, that Sky Wheelies is such a new uh competition that i think drivers are still figuring it out and what um you know plays into part i think that for this competition that the winning things will be the angle 
or the degree and I guess the height as well. So the higher you go, it's kind of like high jump, to be honest. I just thought of this. It's like high jump in arenas. Obviously, it's not the same thing. But I think that the key to the competition will be the degree, so how straight up in the air you can get it and as well as how high you can get it. Um, Because at the end of the day, it's about getting it high in the sky rather than, say, a slap wheelie where you bring it up a little bit and you walk it across the pod. The key is the, as I said, the launch, the degree, and the angle. So I think the drivers that do a lot of sky wheelies could shake up the points because, you know, a lot of people like Donut, that did Donuts, you know, their competition isn't there anymore. You know, the we were talking about last uh, podcast episode, the uh, Hall brothers, their best competitions were racing or time racing and donuts. So now they've only got basically two competitions that they could strive in, but they might perfect their sky wheelies and that might be their best competition to help with their strong suits. So I think it's really going to shake up the points. So Ewan, how do we think the Sky Wheelie competition is going to affect the Arena Championships? Uh, I think we're going to see some interesting results because Sky Wheelies, to be honest, is probably the simplest competition on that right now. And, uh, well, donuts, but <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be some really interesting because I don't, we haven't really seen what can happen yet if it's going to be fully in- implemented or not into the region championships for next year, or they're just like testing the water, see how people react to it. Because we could either see like, as I said earlier, like Gravedigger sweep the entire Skyway competition because it's Gravedigger, I guess. Or it's just, either the independents are going to shine or the felled trucks are just going to run away with it. That's That's what I predict. I think going off of what you were saying, I think the only way that if they didn't do it all that often is if they did a mix of, um, for, uh, yeah, they do a mix. So this is my thought, which I know we will answer in a question that I believe is after the next one on our list. So I'll briefly bring it up now. I think that if they do, if they don't use sky wheelies every single weekend, they will do what they do now. So rather than having events where they just don't do donuts at all, so uh, I'm trying to think of an arena where they just definitely don't do donuts. We'll say Rosemont uh, as an example. The, the Tampa Arena. Oh, Tampa Arena. Okay, perfect. We'll do that, right? So they didn't do donuts there. So for normal stadiums like, say, Salt Lake City, they will do uh, racing, two-wheel donuts, and freestyle, and then for something like Tampa, they could do racing, sky wheelies, two wheel, and freestyle. But I think that by them testing the waters and not using it at all is something that I don't think that Monster Jam or Feld would do. That's just my opinion. I could be completely wrong. I think the Sky Wheelie competition is either here to stay, or as I just said, it's going to happen like what I just said, going off of what Ewan had said. We'll move on to our next question, our third to last question from at Fired. What drivers do you think will be in the Superstar Challenge, and do you think the event will be good as a whole? Uh, we'll not tread over the first bit again, because we already talked about that. Uh, I think, I'll keep this plain and simple. I think the event will be good. Obviously, it's dependent on the weather. Um, you know, we don't want to see a Superstar Challenge where it's, like, raining, like, a thousand miles an hour, and it's muddy as hell. Definitely don't want to see that. Um, and I'm excited. I'm interested to see what they've got. It's the first time since 2019 that we've had an all-star-like event. Uh, I'm really excited. I think it's going to be good. Uh, and especially with the lineup that we'll hear about, I imagine, in the coming weeks. Because uh, as a reminder, guys, they did say that they would reveal the Superstar Challenge lineup uh, at the end of September. We have two weeks left. One week, I imagine that either uh, this weekend or next week or after next weekend before the start of the Australian Monster Jam Tour, uh, I think they're going to announce the superstar lineup. 
Um, and that'll give us a better indication of what we're going to see for this event. So Ewan, your thoughts about what we're going to see at Superstar? We're, we're going to see some great action at Superstar because if it's like All-Star, it's going to be a great track with a bunch of great hits for people to use. Even though it's only one day, which... Is it all three competitions? Yes, correct. Okay, yep. so it is all three. I don't know yeah, how they're going to work if somebody breaks. Who knows what's going to happen with that, but it's going to be good. I mean, for some people, it's kind of a return to normalcy, as some people have put it, with 16 trucks in a stadium. It's going to be... Is it, it's just going to be good, you know? It's probably going to be the best event of well, Parker World Finals this year yeah. for Monster Jam. I think it, I think it could potentially, you know, I might be pushing it here. I know a lot of people will probably clip this up and meme it later, especially when it happens in November. But I think it could have the potential of being one of the best events of the year. Because, you know, a lot of, as you know, some people were a bit let down by World Finals. So this could be uh, a, a better event. But I'm not going to speculate about that now. We'll guess we'll see it. This is a really exciting question that I wanted to answer here. It's from Andy Andy Lisesky. I'm very sorry if I butchered your name. Uh, what's your guys' thoughts as to why they shelve donuts and replace it with the Sky Wheelie competition? And then he added as well, I think it was because donuts get very repetitive and they don't even do that competition in some venues. This way it allows every reader show to still have the four competitions. Uh, Andy, I think you're under something. I think there's another thing as well. Uh, that we'll talk about. Uh, I definitely think that it's because donuts get very repetitive. Uh, you know, some, you know, at the end of the day, sometimes you have mechanical issues and stuff. It really affects the truck's donut performance. So some people just don't spin it as fast. And at the end of the day, you know, unless you see Tom Ment Cyclones where you're up, like, you know, uh, doing like a, a donut and you're on like two wheels, like you're spinning so fast that you're getting the truck up on two wheels or something. You've essentially seen donuts being done like 12 other times. You've got to see differences with the donuts, you know, at least when you're seeing it every sort of weekend, because otherwise, you know, it's kind of just, it's the same thing. You've seen donuts once, you've seen it twice. I think that the, f the first part is right um with what you said andy as well as that i think as well something that has been talked about a lot is ventilation obviously all arenas have um ventilation and you know certain venues when they um they have you know the donuts you know the the dirt comes up and you know it just mess with the ventilation or something or you know some arenas really don't have the best ventilation to you right you win <laughs> no no I, I just like pile drive my knee into my desk oh no are you okay <laughs> I'm, I'm good i'm just trying not to like laugh through your okay through your... all right well <laughs> uh, my condolences to your uh... knee for for being your thing i shouldn't have been look i was looking down in the corner i could see you, you just, just like, see me you just, <laughs> just, just like see me doing pain. this like oh you're just in pain you're just like ah <laughs> <laughs> okay well um my condolences again to you and me so to bring it back i think that the the holy dooly it's hot in here i think the donut competition again can get stale with how many times it's been brought up uh or sorry how many times that you know you see a donut being performed and it's the same thing there's very little variation sky willies now you know there's different areas that you hit it in you know there's different degrees of how you can get it you know some people are gonna do you know fairly average sky wheelies some people are going to get great sky wheelies some people are going to get amazing sky wheelies i think that there's a lot of difference here as i said uh it's dependent on the driver and i think that this can provide some really unique challenges for people so i think it's a combination of giving drivers something new to do it's not the same thing it keeps them on their toes master jam is always evolving and all of that so they're giving them something new to do uh, it's a combination of what you said, Andy, it can get stale. I think also it's a combination of certain arenas not doing donuts because of the ventilation. That's why they don't do donuts at certain places. So I think 
<coughs> excuse me, I think that could be the reason as to why we're getting the donut competition. Oh, sorry, the Sky Wizards competition. So, Ewan, your thoughts. Uh, first off, is your knee okay? Have you recovered from that devastating knee sorry, I already, injury? I, I already got it amputated. It's oh, gone. no. <laughs> I All cut right. off with my pencil. I have, totally. <laughs> oh no i'm john wick you john wick <laughs> but yeah what what are your thoughts about andy's question and everything that i've just said uh i think we kind of traded on this a little bit before with the other questions but yeah i mean i think sky wheelies is going to be like either the competition that is going to replace donuts completely or it's going to be the competition where it's going to like we're like at like i don't know in Baltimore somewhere is going to be like, oh, we can't do donuts. Let's do sky wheelies instead, you know? And that, that's pretty much it. I, I kind of already said everything I wanted to say with a previous question, but yeah, it's, it, it's going to re either replace donuts or be the replacement for donuts when they can't do it. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Uh, and our final question from Ali Burke, two, eight, nine, four, what in your minds would be the best trick based competition donut two wheels etc i've had this thought for a while it was uh, kind of spinning in my mind especially when thinking of doing like leagues and all of that with a few of my buddies or even just fun runs i think that for arenas if they kept doing the two wheel competition and something else like sky wheelies um or donuts if they did that that would be perfect for the arena setting for something like stadiums and i know that this would kind of ruin the uh i guess appeal of doing say something like the superstar challenge where obviously arguably the superstar challenge or the all-star challenge it's defining thing is other than working in a team is the best trick competition I think if stadiums adapted best trick every weekend, we could see some real big innovation. Because for me, the way I see it is not every driver can get the best two-wheel stuff. And so they really have to try something. Um, and sometimes it doesn't score as well. So with best trick, it's about the best trick that you can perform. So for the two wheel drivers, like Ryan Anderson or Tyler Manninger, they're obviously going to pull up something crazy, like a, I don't, I don't know, a moon flip or, or something like that. But for some of the other drivers that aren't necessarily as good as it, they may do some crazy combo, like a sky wheelie into a small moonwalk or like a slap, a slap wheelie where they keep slapping the truck. You know, they, they get the slap, they ride it, they slap it down, they get another or something like that. I think that that would be really cool. Um, outside of that, I think picking, you know, one competition um, from something that exists that isn't best trick would probably be two wheel. I think two wheel's fine. Uh, it's just that sometimes it can get a little repetitive. So, Ewan, we'll hand it over to you. Uh, what do you think is the best uh, the best, best trick based competition. The best, best. Tr oh my god! I, like, so I read that question and my <laughs> mind just like mush. Like <laughs> he can't I, think I, of it. I can't think. Like uh, I guess, uh, I guess the the best, best trick based competition. Uh, I guess it would be best trick. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't. It, it's like it's, it's such a weird question because there is a best trick competition, but he wants to know the. I uh, uh, I can't. Uh, uh, <laughs> what I, going off what you said? I'm just gonna say two wheel. You know, it, obviously most people are gonna go for two wheel moves in the best trick competition, unless we see Kurt Kramer go for a double backflip. Because <laughs> we want to see that. Do Hell it yeah! Come on. I want to see double backflip in general. We haven't seen that since <laughs> like what? Uh, the Rampage Encore. I almost said Foxborough, and I think people would have held me at the stake. Then Todd tried to do one in a uh, the bed. Oh, that was, that was the double forward momentum. But I yeah, mean, but it's, you, it's you, you, you're, you're basically close. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think I think best trick could be the way to go forward, but at the same time. Uh, other than Superstar Challenge, 
uh, team, the, the team dynamic of working in a team. To me, I think doing that kind of removes the, um, it kind of removes its star power uh, because otherwise then it just becomes working in a team. Well, then what happens if they do that in other events? Well, then, oh, the su- I know they wouldn't do that, but, you know, at that point I then mean... the Superstar Challenge would just be a specially branded event. So I don't think they would change that just for the sake of doing that. Uh, but I think best trick in stadiums and then two wheel and arenas and then keep it with sky wheels would be great. That's just my thoughts. Uh, you and were you going to say something? Uh, I mean, I was, I was going to say like, I was just going to compare like the team based competitions to like when they did international back in the day, you know, with the Marvel versus destruction type deal. Yeah. Was, was, Cause that was very interesting. Even though they didn't do points, they kind of just did wins though. True, they could yeah. do that now too with like with australia coming up they could like marvel versus destruction once again that could be even then 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 they remove the team based thing from the (laughs) superstar challenge to make it even less important i mean i think they could if if they really did do that they'd have to distinguish it uh apart from the as you said the superstar challenge i think the team based things could work because essentially every freestyle or every race that you did you earn points uh, I think, to be honest, they could even adapt that at the Superstar Challenge itself. But they have changed it from the All-Star Challenge original event, so it may be completely different in and of itself. We don't know. I'm sure we will find out by the end of September. Uh, Ewan, before we close out uh, tonight's amazing podcast that we've had, any final thoughts about all that we've talked about? Uh, 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 Bari and Gravedigger. <laughs> Bari and Gravedigger. I would love to see that as well. Congrats, Bari, by the way, on getting the opportunity to drive Gravedigger. It's a fantastic thing. Honestly, I wouldn't mind. It was a little weird seeing it at first. You know, it's such weird news, but I would love to see it at future events. Uh, who knows what can come down the line. Thank you guys so much for checking out Bonus Time. We really appreciate it. By the way, special shout out David Lee for the epic intro that we got. The best money I've ever spent. Thank you so much, David Lee. And I should also shout out Christian the Nude for doing the Bonus Time Master Trap Podcast logo. Uh, Thank you to both of those. And thank you all, my fans, for supporting the Bonus Time Master Trap Podcast. We'll be back hopefully by the end of the week with another exciting episode. If not, hopefully we'll have some more exciting videos, maybe another top 10 video. We'll be sure to update you on Master Talk. Thank you everyone all so much for watching and we'll see you with another exciting episode of the Bonus Time Master Trap Podcast. Good night, everybody.